This is going to be a tough 3D printer to review because I had such high hopes for it. I put such high work into it, and yet it seems like at every step of the way, the manufacturer was getting in the way of what I was trying to do, or, or just trying to get the high score on the list of things that you shouldn't do. I mean, for starters, when Selpik contacted me and said, hey, would you be willing to do a video about our 3D printer? I was excited. It's a $99, well, no, actually, it's a $129 3D printer, but still, it's, it's definitely in that easy to get into price range. And I thought, yeah, if this is that easy to get into, I should definitely be telling people about it. Now, I will say, Selpik has absolutely got the first impression down pat. Their packaging is retail ready. You could just, can't you just see this on a shelf and go, ooh, yeah, I want to buy that. This is so much better than the 3D printers that come in a cardboard box. This looks fantastic. First impressions, they figured it out. So, good price, and it looks good to begin with, but a beginner-friendly 3D printer needs to do more than just look good and be cheap to get into your house. It needs to... Uh, what, what's the word that I'm looking for? Work! It needs to actually function. Now, I should mention that Selpik launched this on Kickstarter, and being somebody who's run a Kickstarter or two myself, and is actually currently running one, so go check out the Printer Block Beast on Kickstarter, but... As somebody who's run a Kickstarter or two, I wanted to help them out. I wanted to give them that boost. So despite the fact that they sent it to me, it arrived more or less exactly as their Kickstarter was starting, I unboxed it and tried to get it running as fast as I could. But that falls under the category of giving me a ridiculous time constraint, and that's never a good sign. The first couple of prints, I guess, worked. These were the ones that were on the SD card. And I should mention that this particular 3D printer doesn't have an interface screen on it. It has just four buttons. And these four buttons are all you need to control the 3D printer. You just stick in the SD card and it looks for the most recent file. This is kind of an upgrade over the Degaba Neva 3D printer, which you had to give it a specific name. This one, you can name it whatever you want. It just looks for the most recent. That's intelligent. That's good. I like that. And the first print kind of worked. The second print had a bit of an X layer shift, but I, I was printing it with their sample coil of filament. It's not even a whole roll of filament. It's just a little coil. And when that ran out, I had to get some other filament. This is where I immediately started having problems. No matter what I printed, no matter even the exact same STLs that I had printed before, trying to print them again with different filament, it could never finish. Over and over again, the prints would get part of the way through and they would jam. The, the filament was constantly under extruding. Now I have a couple of prints that I always do when I'm testing a 3D printer, one of which is printer blocks. And the printer blocks that I printed, yeah, they, they function, I guess, technically, but they're too tall. They're, the dimensions are all, this, this thing can't even print printer blocks. And then what I try to do is I try to print one thing as big as the build volume will do. So I grabbed a Chibi Mall elephant and I tried to print it tall, but as you can see, the top of it is just kind of didn't work. And the bottom of it stuck to the build plate. You can still see the elephant's footprint on my build plate. I switched out to some different filament and had slightly more and then absolutely no success with it. What's going on with this printer? Why is everything under extruding? Well, to understand that, we need to understand a little bit about how 3D printers work. You see, the hot end is just a tube that the filament goes into. At some point, it has to melt the filament, 
put it into a smaller outing, squirt it out as a liquid. So the filament is being pushed by its solid self, which then reaches a certain point and melts and then gets squished out as a liquid. Now the problem with this setup is that if it melts too much, if the filament melts too high, then the liquid filament will fill up that volume and when it cools, it will stick to the edge. And so most hot ends have a breaking point. Uh, we call this a heat break. Below it, melty, fine. Above it, it should stay solid. And to keep things solid above that, they employ a lot of different techniques. Many hot ends have fans on the side of the hot end blowing on it, and they'll put little fingers of metal sticking out to try and catch as much of that air and funnel the coolness there, just so that everything above the heat break stays cool and the plastic will stay solid, and everything below the heat break turns into a liquid and gets squirted out in a controlled manner. And if for some reason the heat creeps higher than the heat break, it might stick to the walls and then cool off again. And once it cools, it will create a jam and the filament can't push it hard enough. So I experimentally took apart their hot end. It's just a couple of screws and it's kind of designed to be taken off because it's supposed to have a laser adapter on there. And we'll get to that in a second. But I took it off and what did I discover underneath here? But they had all of the wires for the hot end and the temperature sensor running right in front of the fan. This thing had no airflow. No wonder I was getting jams. The, the heat was just allowed to creep all the way up this darn thing. Now I mentioned that they have a laser attachment. Theoretically, in order to get the laser attachment on here, you have to open up the control box and, and put it on a couple of wires, a couple of wires that are covered up by the rest of the wires, and then plug it in there and then use a special piece of control software to, I don't know, reflash this so that you could do a laser. It never worked for me. It's like, it's like they never actually used a machine that they were trying to sell. And that too is on the list of things you don't do if you want your 3D printer to succeed. Now, of course, throughout this entire process, I'm reaching out to them. I'm contacting them and I'm saying, hey guys, can you tell me what's going on? Can you help me with this? And they suggested that I change this setting or that setting, do it a little hotter, do it a little colder. And I tried it all. You see, I, I tried every setting possibility and over and over it had the same problem. And then when I opened up the hot end, I said, guys, this is your problem. You need to fix this problem before you send these units out. Now I mentioned that this was on Kickstarter and I wasn't able to get a video out before their Kickstarter ended, but I was able to diagnose the problem. Their Kickstarter had 138 backers or so who had given them a hundred dollars and more to get this 3D printer. And I said, listen, for the sake of those people, you need to fix this design before you send it out. And their response to me was, it's okay. We're not gonna promote this machine anymore. You don't need to do your video. That's on the list too. Don't tell me not to make a video. I don't make these videos for you guys. I make these videos for my audience so that they understand. And I really wanted to make a video for the 138 or so people who back this Kickstarter so that they could have a hope of using it for something good. And if you are one of the people who back this Kickstarter, at leave a comment down here so that other people can find you. Maybe, maybe hopefully a community will build up of people who can make this work. You know, it's funny, I've never seen a 3D printer this cheaply made. The, the print bed isn't metal, it's just a piece of acrylic. There's no heating to be done on it because it's a piece of acrylic. The extruder head is mounted on a piece of acrylic. It's, it's, it's the most amazingly plastic 3D printer. And you can tell when you pick it up, it, it feels cheap, but again, it is cheap. So, you know, why should that be a surprise? As I'm checking out this 3D printer, I'm starting to recognize it a little bit. I'm, I'm starting to realize that it's surprisingly similar to another 3D printer that's out there. The Easy 3 X1, maybe it's an X2 or nah, maybe it's an X4. I'm not sure. It's definitely a similar design. Is it Easy 3D and it's just been squished together. Is that how we're supposed to say that? I've never been clear on this one. I reached out to the Easy 3D people and I said, hey, did you guys know that Selpic 
is basically selling your 3D printer. Did you partner with them? Is this is this like a collaboration thing? And their response back to me was, no, it's not a collaboration. We did not give them our design. We're talking to them about this. I feel like I stepped in something there. And despite their assertions that they're not promoting this printer anymore, they're still selling it. You can go to their website and order one right now, but I have no idea why you would want to do that. They produced a 3D printer that doesn't work, and they didn't know that it didn't work because they never tried using it. They made pretty packaging to sell it. They, they worked on that first impression, but they didn't work on the actual functionality. And when they were given the solution that they needed to do, their response was, nah. At this point, I think you know my opinion of this particular machine, but is that an opinion of the company entirely? This isn't the first thing that Selpik has sold and sold through Kickstarter. They started before with a handheld 2D printer that you could just slide across any surface. It would print your message on it. And I saw that and I was like, ooh, that's pretty cool. That would be useful for... But at least that had people showing it off and, and showing that it worked. And I was kind of hoping for the same thing with this. So honestly, I'm disappointed. But more than that, I'm making this video just so that in the future, if you see this company selling something else on Kickstarter, check them and double check them before you back them. Because I don't want you to end up like the 138 people who back this Kickstarter. Of course, not every Kickstarter is out there to just take your money and run. For instance, you could back the Print-A-Block Beast Kickstarter today and get awesome articulated building models that you can mix and match and create your own today. So go check it out, link in the description. Sorry, I just have to plug it because I'm, I'm working so hard on this and I'm loving it so much. I mean, have you seen this T-Rex? He's amazing. Look at him. 